Hello, I'm Steve. A little about myself. I'm a retired law enforcement officer with 20 years of service. I began my career in the jail, worked the road, and became an investigator. During my career, my training consisted of everything from SWAT to becoming a state certified crime scene technician. I've investigated crimes from thefts to homicides. After retiring and becoming aware of true crime and web sleuths, I started my channel for web sleuths to better understand the perspectives of law enforcement. Not only do we cover true crime, I go out into the field and assist families who have lost loved ones to homicide and their cases are considered cold. Join me as we look and bring attention to these critical cases. Hello everyone, glad you're able to join us tonight. If you're new to the channel, we absolutely welcome you and thank you for being here. Uh, we'll have a presentation slideshow and during that presentation, if any questions come up that you wish to be answered, Mrs. Steve here will be putting them in order and highlighting them, and we'll get to them after the slide presentation. Um, as always, while you're here in chat, be respectful of the mods, families, and each other. And with some of the documents that have been released on Richard Allen, there's a lot of names in there. Um, let's try to stay away from any of the written names because... And calling out people um, of course there will probably be some initials in there and things that we'll overlook but let's not go in there right now uh, and be doing anything that can have an impact on these people's lives for the fact that uh, this is part of, of a court hearing and it's a little bit different than arrest warrants you're having um, attorneys throwing names out there for a uh, agenda or a narrative and in the defense of their client. Uh, while it is part of the court record, we still have to be mindful that uh, uh, that these people's lives uh, can be affected if and should be affected. depends on what part they play in it. But that's up for law enforcement to um, follow up on and the uh, investigators, and we'll let them follow that out for the fact that a lot of information has come out in the last couple of days that we never um, imagined uh, of this twist and turns that have uh, popped up uh, in just the last two days. And so with that in mind, let's just be um, uh, respectful as much as possible for the fact that anyone um, life that is affected by this court case, other than ones uh, that, are, that have been um, signed by the court as suspects or search warrants uh, that this doesn't have the backing of the court as far as nothing has been signed saying that they are responsible for anything at this time so let's just be respectful of that and i appreciate it and um but uh so let's get into it i guess here what's going on oh i'm just <laughs> to... get caught up but already i am <laughs> i mean it's already going crazy so All right. All right. Um, there we go. All right. If you have any information about this case as we proceed and we head towards the courts and towards these hearings, absolutely make sure law enforcement has that information. And and being mindful and respectful of, of these other names that have been included, if you have information regarding those individuals, make it count to the people that can do something about it. And that's going to be the attorneys involved, the prosecution, law enforcement, um, and handle it through the uh, court systems and things for the fact that there's a lot of unknowns and a lot of accusations made currently. And so let's just make sure that the powers that be that can have an impact and make sure that we have justice um, will be uh, uh, given to the proper authorities. All right. Of course, Richard Allen is one that has been charged and the Frank's hearing that is about to be brought forth is to bring to in question um, by the defense. Was he justly um, charged? Was he justly um, the subject of search warrants being issue, issued for his residence? And from those uh, uh, court orders, is he in where he should be and is the court moving in the proper uh, direction and that's what all this hearing will be about and to see 
um, specifically about the search warrant. And um, as all things in law enforcement, um, now, of course, most of everything that's happening now is not in the hands of law enforcement. It's in the hands of the court and the court officers, being the prosecution, uh, the attorneys for representing the prosecution, and the attorneys representing the uh, defense. So it's what law enforcement has done up to this point, they've done. Um, and they will have to um, uh, live and um, on that hill until the day that the uh, jury gets all the evidence and um, uh, as it's brought forth into uh, court, whatever deeds they did and whatever investigations they've done and how they've um, um, brought that evidence and maintained it and how they presented it to the court is going to be critical. Um, and there's a lot of accusations within um, that 136 page document. Um, did I ever expect during a gag order to see what was presented in that. And we're not going to go in there and read um, that 136 page um, document. I've read it. Um, and there's a lot of details in there about the crime scene. It is quite surprising. And how much of it is true through the perspective of, of what the uh, defense is looking at. Um, is that the same impression that the CSI guys got while they were there at the uh, scene? Is that the impression that um, uh, Ives at the time, who was extremely intelligent and and, um, and made some observations and uh, during his interview made some revelations that are very supportive that there were strange things within that crime scene and that they could be read a certain way. Um, is that what he was meaning by what the... Um, um, defense is now how it's brought up now i have no idea uh there will be a lot of speculations that that's exactly what he saw and um and that's what his thought uh, was doesn't mean that's what everything in law enforcement and everyone instantly saw of when they were there at the crime scene looking upon this um because you can you know you can take 10 people show them an item or show them some um image and you'll get a lot of different uh, um, thoughts of what that image and how it can be um, uh, written down, described, descriptors of, and what the meaning of that would be. Uh, you know, so uh, just because this is what we have right now um, isn't something that uh, is in stone, that this is the only possibility. Um, it is something interesting, and we can see that law enforcement, or at least some parts of law enforcement, went down the avenues looking at, was this some type of ritualistic sacrifice by this pagan group? Uh, <coughs> and, and rightly so. Uh, seeing what was presented in there, there is enough that you would think, yes, uh, we do need to look at this. And there are connections between this pagan group and individuals that were familiar with at least one victim. And, um, and that has to be looked at without doubt. And that has to be investigated uh, extensively. Did law enforcement fulfill that bill? We'll find out. Uh, if you go by what the defense says, no, they failed, um, which is <laughs> sad in and of itself uh, because the repercussions from that um, it can be far reaching and it may um, get uh, certain things suppressed. And uh, we'll get further into that as we go along with the slideshow, because um, as just as often and as much as a interview um, has a purpose and has a goal, these um, hearings uh, presented by the defense have a goal. And what is that goal? And it's quite obvious. We have to suppress something. And whatever evidence is out there that the defense um, knows ties Richard Allen to the crime scene, it has to be suppressed for the fact that if, if the experts come to testify about certain items found at the scene that were collected from his home that connects him to that scene, it's a done deal. If the jury gets that and they believe it and they vote for it, 
I mean, it's a done deal. It's over. And so the defense is doing what they have to do. Um, I have no problem with them about that. Um, and uh, is it all true what the uh, defense has put into their narrative? I don't know. Um, but uh, it, it's something that does occur. And have I ever seen anything like this? No, I haven't. <laughs> Nor will I was uh, speaking with uh, uh, Mrs. Steve yesterday, and I said, uh, as I was reading through that 136 page thing, and, and I told her, I said, just give me a page number just a page number and I'll read you something that is unbelievable. And she gave me a page number and I read her something that was unbelievable because there's not a page in that 136 pages that I can think of that if you read it, that you would think it came out of a novel. Um, uh, some of the most amazing uh, revelations and at times almost outlandish thoughts that you would never think would be part of this court case. Um, did I see this coming? I, I knew the defense, as I had mentioned before, that when you look at some of the uh, defense's ways of defending clients, such as with Casey Anthony, that they'll come out of left field with something that no one expects. And was I expecting something along those lines? Yes, as far as with Logan or the uh, uh, clients. Yes, I thought so along those lines. Never expected this 136 page, though and where it can lead us and some of the ramifications of what possibly happened for, from those 136 pages, you know, we get information about the crime scene. Um, I really wish that wasn't out there. Um, I really don't. Uh, was that necessary? Um, at this point, I, I don't know. Uh, the uh, defense will have to live with that. Um, and whatever the court decides to do with that, because, can you use some of these hearings as um, ways to get around a gag order? It appears so. Um, then we have the list of the suspects and the third parties that could be responsible for the cases within this and the effects upon their lives and things. Um, and uh, we have to be mindful of those. And is this another thing about that? Of course, this is from the discovery and these names and the investigation is included within these reports and even the FBI reports of behavioral analysis unit and things that they've done and what can be used by those experts because um, there's other reports out there that we don't have currently and that are going to be coming to bear that the defense is going to get these experts in there. Uh, they're going to bring in the experts on the Ron Logan and what drove them down that path. They're going to bring in experts of what of these um, pagan groups and what drove um, them to think that the individual responsible for this crime, if that is the case, is going to be huge. Um, because you could take uh, 20 experts and put on the stand and get their opinions, and but you put an FBI agent up there and uh, get his opinion. And uh, who are you going to go with? Um, not so much for me. I've, I, I've worked with them. Uh, they're a great group. Don't get me wrong about that. They're a great group and everything. But in the world of law enforcement, they're just another law enforcement entity to me. They're not uh, any greater um, or higher. Of course, they have the standings of, in the back of the federal government. But from the eye of uh, one law enforcement officer to another, uh, we're on equal ground, standings, um, respect is mutual, um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but then we also bring in the investigative team and the structure of the team that went in there that's within this 136-page report of where they go in and they, um, uh, the, the man in charge of Liggett of going in and creating the affidavit and getting it approved with the prosecution and submitting it to the judge for the search warrant. And certain accusations that information is withheld, information has been altered, um, and purposely. And that is key. Uh, that's probably the biggest thing that uh, the prosecution is going to have to overcome, um, that if certain information was withheld from the judge 
and it was done with the intent to um, bypass uh, any of the Fourth Amendment and the rights of, uh, of search and seizure and knowingly and with purpose, then there's going to be issues. And we have to look at that. And um, so do I fault the uh, defense for going with this? Um, no. I mean, that's part of their job. But um, some of the information that was released, um, I'd rather it hadn't been for the families and things. Do we have to have all that information now? No. Um, does the court? Absolutely. Absolutely. But anyway, we'll get a little bit further into it. Is everybody being mindful in there? Yes, they are. Uh, thank you, everybody in chat, for uh, respecting the rules, and uh, we appreciate it. And uh, But we'll answer all your questions as soon as we can. But anyway, I, I took certain things to make sure that we're clarified. And um, is there any way that I could create a one-hour show that touched upon every aspect of that 136 pages? No, I'm not that smart. Uh, it is absolutely amazing. Um, and it I've read it uh, one and a half times so far. I'm going to read it probably five or ten times to comprehend everything that's in there. Uh, but is there any way that you can cover every aspect of this? No. But tonight we're going to talk about whatever questions y'all have about any part of it. Um, I'll be glad to address. But we're going to look at some key points of what the search warrant and why search warrants are and what this Frank's hearing will mean. And it is absolutely lasered focused on one thing, and uh, which I'll, uh, on my uh, last portion of the slides, you'll see. Um, but search warrants is just simply this piece of paper that the court orders uh, that by a judge issues to authorize law enforcement to conduct a search of a person or the property for evidence of a crime, and it allows a seizure of that evidence found during the search. That's all a, a search warrant is, is that the court says, yes, you have the right that uh, law enforcement has the right to come in into a protected area that is normally that they would not have, be allowed to enter, look at, seize, or take. But that search warrant, um, when properly obtained, <laughs> will allow them to come into there and take what they need to prove whatever type of crime that's being addressed within that search warrant. And the Frank's hearing is, is that this court hearing is in a criminal case where the defense challenges the validity of the information used to obtain a search warrant. And as you read through uh, that 136 pages, uh, and especially when you get to the unified command and uh, ligate and the obtaining of that search warrant, that this is what it's all about as far as the Frank hearing saying, was it a warrant that was uh, obtained through the proper methods? Um, and But this Frank motions and this hearing will outline the specific challenges to that search warrant. And they're in there. My goodness, um, you know, even the 90-something steps taken uh, at the crime scene by the offender. Um, and, of course, a lot of those things, as you look through those 92 steps, um, I think it's 92, uh, best of my memory. But um, that challenge is, is it one offender, two offenders, multiple offenders. And so um, the defense did a great job as far as outlaying the their challenges. Um, but if the court does give a successful ruling and that they do decide that they wish to suppress some or all the evidence seized from the search warrant at his residence, that's going to be huge, guys. Um, because one of the biggest things, if not the only thing that links Richard Allen to that uh, crime scene is a bullet. And uh, that's left between the victims of Libby and Abby. And the only thing that will link that bullet um, to Richard Allen is going to be contained within his home. Now, do they have other evidence that from his home that links him to that crime scene? There may be. Um, and we'll talk about all those other possibilities that, that may have been discovered within his home that links him back to that. Um, 
and this is probably the most concerning part about it is, is that this Frank hearing has a possibility of, um, of being successful, especially if what they say is true. I don't know how true it is, but um, they're going to have to address it. And there's um, reading through it and they have to prove this to the court. Uh, just them saying it means nothing, but they, they're going to have to take it to the court and prove it to the court. And if they can satisfy that judge, then we're going to see some things. We're going to see some fireworks. Um, this is one of the statements by the uh, uh, the attorneys representing Richard Allen. And I, I took a couple of excerpts from it because it's something I've never in my life seen in a, uh, a court order or a motion that the court will know at the conclusion of this memorandum that the defense is not inventing, fabricating, or exaggerating these facts. And this is key here. No matter how crazy those facts may appear. And if you haven't read the 136 pages, you don't know how crazy some of these facts appear. Um, this is pure honesty here. Um, I never imagined, like I said, I, I told her I'm in a dream world. I'm in the matrix. I'm in somewhere. I, I can't believe what I'm reading. Um, because, and I'll never be able to repeat that enough that, uh, I was in shock, um, uh, as I read through it. Um, you know, I received, I don't know how many countless links to this report, a bunch. but a lot of people were saying, have you seen this? Have you seen this? And, uh, uh, absolutely amazing. And then another excerpt, um, that, uh, it's, as we move forward, with other shows, we'll go in and I'll address these excerpts, especially with respectfully with each, because uh, it would take a show to just talk about each of these things. But um, when the attorneys put in this memorandum, they don't teach you in law school what to do when your client who is accused of murder is being guarded by members of a religious cult whose member whose members evidence strongly support were the actual murderers um, and uh, absolutely amazing. I never would have uh, imagined that was a uh, part of it. And um, I've got the pages that that's on um, absolutely amazing. Um, and what part of that is true and were these guards part of this uh, pagan group and religion It's possible. Does it have any meaning in that they were also part of the homicide? No. Um, you know, there's a lot of different uh, religions out there and a lot of people um, in all different types of beliefs and, and support whatever their beliefs are. And through Facebook groups and everything, there are going to be links, you know, um, now, especially with the Internet, um, that you can link people to so much. And what does it mean? Uh, I don't know. Um, and did it occur? Um, the defense absolutely makes uh, it appear that that is the case. So that's something that we have to look at. But from the Franks hearing that if it is uh, upheld, the fruit of the poisonous tree is what law enforcement is trained that we do not wish to ever be part of picking of the fruit of the poisonous tree. And that doctrine is that it's an extension of the exclusionary rule, which prevents evidence obtained in violation of the Fourth Amendment from being admitted in a criminal trial. Means that if you went and got a search warrant and with using any misguided, intentional uh, flanking, circumventing the Fourth Amendment in any way of trying to trick a judge, misinform a judge, um, and create an image that is not part of what reality is, and you do it intentionally, that evidence is no good. Uh, and that's the greatest concern that we have to look at at this thing. Um, and um, will it hold water? I don't know, but it has to be held. We have to look at this. Um, and there's... Um, a key thing that we have to look at that regardless of what happens with this um, uh, court order, uh, there's certain facts that we know 
that if it doesn't get to a jury, we know. And we'll we'll talk about those in just a moment. But uh, but once the court has reviewed the motion for the Franks hearing, the memorandum in support of the motion for Franks hearing, as well as all the attacks exhibits that support the memorandum, Richard Allen, by and through counsel, would ask this court to set this matter for a hearing in which the defense will be arguing that the search warrant was illegal. Then the defense will be requesting the court to suppress all fruits of the illegal search. And as I mentioned before, this is what is the big key thing. This is what all that 136 pages was for, was for this one section of this that we are going to ask to suppress um, for the fact that this is the most damaging part of the whole case that they have against Richard Dowling is whatever they recovered from that home. And in, is it just the gun or is there more? Is, was there digital evidence recovered? Was there DNA recovered? Was there uh, blood-stained clothing that uh, they were able to test? Maybe not be able to get a DNA profile, but maybe test and through luminol and other methods. Or are there other weapons that they recover that absolutely, uh, through photography, you know, connects him to that crime scene. You know, of course, we have the firearm with all the uh, uh, characteristics of, of the ejection and being cycled through that gun by unspent round uh, that they absolutely want to separate and destroy. And that's the strongest evidence that we know of right now that put that puts Richard Allen at the crime scene. Is there digital? Is there photography? Is there cell phone? Because they, you know, they recover quite a bit of other uh, cell phones. Um, or is there other things in computers? Um, the DNA thing, if uh, uh, from the search warrant, is something that probably uh, can be a, obtained in several different ways. Maybe not just from the home, but if it's DNA of the victims that is recovered from the home, that's a totally different ball uh, game. Um, along with the blood. And if there's certain weapons that are recovered that match some of the injuries uh, from the crime scene and they can suppress that, we don't know what all is going to be suppressed from this search warrant. But we know that they want this, uh, that this day that that search was executed at Richard Allen's house, they do not wish that to be brought into court. And, um, and it's going to have play a huge part on the trial. And if this suppression doesn't work, I expect that they, um, I wouldn't be surprised that uh, we wouldn't go to court. Although, you know, you never know, but that's just my personal opinion. All righty, right, about 28 minutes. We got any questions? Oh, yeah. All righty. But uh, we appreciate everybody uh, being here. Appreciate everybody being mindful and uh, respectful of everyone. And thank you all. going to be quite interesting okay well uh, rightly so this is like i said if anybody out there isn't shocked by this uh, you know send me an email i like to talk to you <laughs> all right so you have um upwards of 20 at this point mm -hmm. you want me to start with members first questions and then we'll go back to others Sure, sure. Yeah, or, yes. Yeah. We'll uh, take are you wanting to be done by nine for what's her name? Um yeah. Um there will be another secrets has had a show on that will be doing a show. She's part of our investigative team on the crime case and she's having a show at nine. So we're gonna run through these as good as quick as we can and uh cover as all of them. And then um after our show here, I'm gonna run over and be in her chat and uh, aggravate her a little bit. And uh, if any of the mods have her link, you can post uh, uh, her link to uh, her show. It that will be starting at nine, but we'll get there when we get there. Okay. And blue light for thistle do nicely. Thank you. Thank Remember you. Appreciate it. Twelve months. Thank you. Wow, that's a year. It is. I can't Indeed, imagine. That's really. absolutely amazing. That's crazy. All right. So let's see here. <clears throat> so you just want me just to do them all? Just go down? Yeah, just go through them. Go. We're going. We're going to answer them. Okay. All right. 
and from Anna at True Crime Rep. You and Ruckus went to Delphi. Does any of this new information resonate with you? Ruckus indicated something was going to happen soon. What the heck? Um, I've been to Delphi, I don't know, oh, God. four or five times. Um, um, I, I travel through there whenever I'm going up to um, um, Indiana, working the other cold cases, and also as I pass through to Iowa. Um, and um, I've been to the crime scene. Did I see any of these things? Um, and did I even look for them? No, not really. Um, but, you know, as I said, there there's a lot of things that, they from the crime scene they mentioned about limbs and things you know it's a forest there's a lot of limbs out there um what their impressions and what their interpretations of what's in those images and i'm sure that there's hundreds if not thousands or so images of the crime scene and uh through the uh, i know that they really address at least 12 of the images um of, of the crime scene that they interpret as being part of this pagan group um and uh, but um, uh, I've been in crime scenes in the woods and seen a lot of things. And, you know, um, your mind can take you down certain paths and you have to be careful of it. Um, they're only saying it. But does that mean what it is right now? No. But uh, yes, Ruckus uh, did said some, uh, was saying something was going to be happening soon. And through the, you know, I, do I think that this is what uh, uh, Ruckus was addressing as far as uh, of this pagan group. I don't think so. I think it was having to do with um, um, other third parties that are suspected of it. That's, I speculate on that, but I think that's more from what I uh, understood of Ruckus. Okay, and then um, we have that, and then... Blue light for Miss Brenda Birkenback, gifting membership. Thank mm -hmm. you so very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. It means a lot to us. Helps us. Yeah, it looks like Winston, Winston. Uh, in the house. Yes. Right? Speaking of Delphi, that's where, uh, okay. whenever I stop in, uh, per DRN, thank you for everything you do for this channel. Let's see here. All right. So let me catch up now. I'll do this one. All right, and this is from Kelt. Can the lawyers lie in that document, the descriptions and statements? Can they lie? I, you know, Obviously. I don't. I don't know if it's so much as a lie. They have to prove for this Frank hearing to be successful. They have to prove the points or bring to or, or convince a judge that they have a legitimate argument and that. Uh, they have to tell the judge that, yes, can't you see that this has a legitimate argument that this is a ritual by a pagan group? And even a group of law enforcement officers agree. And there evidently is going to be some support of that for the fact that they did investigate it. So saying it's an out and out lie, I don't know. Uh, but we often see where attorneys will bring up certain things and certain points and then they, you never hear of them again. Um, did that occur in this 136 pages? Um, I don't know. Um, but um, uh, will they, how long of a hearing would it take uh, to cover uh, 136 pages? It, it would be uh, quite lengthy and I don't know what the court will allow and, um, and how much time they'll set aside for this, but um, I can't wait until the court hearing, if granted. All right. And blue light from Miss Stephen Sam King. Sam. Great to hear from you again. <laughs> I feel like I've stepped inside a Stephen King novel with these developments. Absolutely. It sounds like me yesterday. <laughs> and, and absolutely, you're correct. I mean, for the fact that uh, Stephen King will terrify you and, um, the things that were described from that crime scene, it would terrify anyone. And, um, um, and we should be terrified that there is such evil in the world. And blue light from Ms. Miranda. Uh, I'll refrain from asking my usual number of questions tonight. Thanks for always taking questions and sharing your knowledge. Thank you. Oh, appreciate that. Very kind of you. Ask a question. <laughs> 
You're not going to hurt my feelings. All right. Let's see here. Uh, Dave, Steve, did you read the report about the boy? Um, I don't know. I've read a report about the boy. I don't know if it's the same one that you're talking about. Okay. Molly at True Crime Web. How is the defense allowed to freely release this document to the public with a gag order on? Or was it leaked or did the judge say it was okay to release? All I know is I was sent something that was filed and you lower, you go out there and the news is covering, YouTube channels covering, attorneys um, of, of YouTube channels or having that have her YouTube channels are covering it. Um, it's a filing in the court. And is it something and is the judge happy? We will learn quite quickly if the judge is happy with what has happened here. Um, I, like I said, I've never, I don't know how to take it. I asked her if it was someone that worked for her and you had told them not to do certain things and this was released, what would your, your findings be? And uh, it wouldn't be good. Um, so how the court will handle, I have no idea. Uh, will they accept it in stride or will they have sanctions? Um, like I said, I've never seen nothing like it. All right. And blue light from Miss Bam and Sin gifting five memberships. Thank, Thank you. you so very much. Appreciate that. Awesome. All right. Let me see here. And Kelt, surely it wasn't 136 <laughs> pages of BS. Me Definitely, or defense can lie about statements they provided reference cited there is truth in there question is how much and which parts and that's what the hearing will answer with some of these people and some of the investigative and the uh, information has to be like i said they're going to have to bring some supportive evidence to the judge and it's just not oh i'll take your word for it or at least i believe that's the way it uh, should be And 63 clocks. If the document description of the crime scene is accurate, I don't understand how there isn't forensic evidence about the perp. Nothing transferred? If it's accurate about what happened, the DNA evidence is there. They just haven't found it. Or they have found it, and we just don't know about it. And I agree with you. If you take all the steps that they say occurred in all the undressing and redressing and contact and moving of clothing. You know, uh, can you, and, and you have to pre bring certain items to minimize the exchange, the Lacard's principle of exchange of evidence. And is that something that uh, a normal criminal would do? Absolutely not. Um, and so uh, I agree with you uh, that it makes no sense from the forensic side that there isn't some type of uh, transfer of evidence from victim uh, to suspect and from suspect to victim. Okay. Let's see here. And this will do nicely. At TCW, how are they allowed to put such graphic details in a motion when there is a gag order? Oh, that's the same thing. Yes. Well, <laughs> the judge, I, I guess we're going to get clarification on that in a few days. If we don't hear anything from the judge or there's nothing addressed about this, um, now, will the judge make it public what's happening or will it be behind closed door? Um, I don't know. Um, but... Um, uh, the, you know, the judge would probably take the manner behind closed door for the fact that they don't want to have anything negative uh, affect the outcome or look negative as far as possibility of um, uh, how Richard Allen is perceived by a jury pool of people that know nothing about the case. Um, and so uh, anything, anything that makes headlines and news will have an effect on a certain part of the jury pool. And I'm sure they want to try to limit as much uh, exposure to that as possible. Um, 
Anna, there are problems with the writing in this document, grammatical errors, and some of it reads like a cheap novel written by attorneys or assistants. I agree with you 100%. When I was reading that, it absolutely read like uh, something that you would see. Um, uh, well, it wasn't written as well as Stephen King novel. You, I agree with you on that. Um, and yes, uh, I would uh, uh, take that it's uh, by some of the legal aid, uh, paralegals or otherwise. Um, and um, I need to go back to school. yes, I agree. But yes, the cheap novel is a good uh, interpretation. And from Nan, I heard that the guards in jail videotaped when he was with his attorney. Do you know if that's true and legal? Um, there's often a lot of different types of, uh, of videos and, and, and of certain areas within the court or, or within the jail system of inmates and especially high profile inmates for a lot of security reasons. It's just not. And I can tell you, it's absolutely not to spy upon by the prosecution by uh, upon the defense that that is not what all the videotaping uh, would be for uh, it would be for interactions and make ensuring security and that certain things and certain things are provided for the fact that we don't want the uh, defense also to make up things and uh, there's a lot of reasons that you would want a video made of suspects client privileges and things but not to read lips and not to overhear and not to uh, uh, jeopardize his uh, right to uh, representation. That's not what the uh, video coverage or the overwatch is for. All right, and support with Stefa. Do you remember going over these symbols with Blaine last year because of the Odin and that person possible involvement? You know, I don't, uh, I remember Blaine, but I don't remember if that was uh, some of the stuff that was in there and what did it mean. Uh, but um, uh, I remember uh, there was something brought about, and it's been brought up by uh, several uh uh, other YouTube channels, um, and uh, and it's been part of the uh, rumors out there for quite a while. But even just for the fact that certain things are symbolized, and there there are certain signatures or possible signatures and blood patterns, um, there's a lot of things. You know, just like when you look at a blood spatter or, or a blood pattern, and is it what you really see? Or is it something else? Um, you know, you can look at a cloud and see every image in the world just from looking at clouds and what uh, uh, your mind uh, sees. Um, and it can happen the same with uh, blood patterns. You have to be extremely careful. And so the tree limbs and stuff and the limbs and the placement and what did the uh, 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 and how they were laid out. Uh, did they represent anything specially? I don't know. We'll have to see when we see the pictures. Which I don't know if we'll ever see the pictures, but someone will. Okay, and Oz, are we there yet? Mr. Steve, I sent some info to C. I found about the sect and other info about it to Chris. All right. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, and J Farm 13, does it mention how they knew the girls would be there and if they were targets or random sacrifice? Well, we, no. Uh, it's not mentioned in there how they would within the pagan group or how that it was focused upon that. They did from my reading of the document. And um, if, uh, you know, of course, the court may ask that uh, at some point. Um, are you saying that this cult group um, targeted them at what time? How did they lure them there or all that? Which are legitimate questions. But uh, I didn't see where it was addressed in there.
Ruckman Rippy for Freedom at True Crime Web. I am well versed in the pagan symbols. If you would like to talk about this, sure. Uh, send me an email. Um, regardless uh, about this case or not, um, there. If you are well versed in that, uh, absolutely would appreciate uh, having you in my files as someone I could contact uh, in other cases as we move forward. Uh, for the fact that this won't be the only case, the possibility that there is a pagan connection with uh, crimes. Thank you for that. And Molly Molly at True Crime Web. Since there is a gag order, can the prosecution, Ellie, respond to this motion outside of a court hearing? I wouldn't um, think so. Uh, but then again, I don't know what the uh, prosecution will file uh, addressing uh, if they don't want this hearing. Uh, you know, uh, I'm amazed and I won't be shocked at anything from this point on. I, I don't think. And now I'll eat that. I'll eat those words. I'm pretty sure uh, that nothing will surprise me. And we'll see what happens in two weeks. And from Deb, body cam footage of finding bullet. You know, I think the only mentioning that they have of is where the bullet was and when it um, from being covered in the area where it was um, located. Uh, hopefully, CSI did its part, and they, as the stages of the discovery, of the identification, of the recovery, uh, of the packaging, all of that was documented through photography. It doesn't appear so for the fact that the defense says they don't have those images uh, from what I've read. Um, but we don't have all the uh, crime photos. So uh, hopefully it, it does. Uh, if CSI collected that item, there should be a multi-step photographic and paper trail uh, showing how that bullet was and where exactly that bullet was found, recovered, and how it was uh, packaged. And uh, Deb, Mr. Steve, do you know if bullet found had gone through a gun? They said it was cycled through the gun. It wasn't fired round. It was an unspent round that had been cycled through, which created cer certain uh, characteristic markings on that bullet from the ejectors, um, slide, and whatever other striation marks that could be uh, just through cycling, not firing, but the gun being racked by the hand and not being uh, trigger pressed and a bullet firing. Unspent round. And from Dave, Steve, what do you make of the defense saying they have not received any images of the bullet at the crime scene? That's distressing. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, like I said, I don't know uh, why that is um, um, and how the bullet was found and how it was recovered. Um, and if that's the case, of course, CSI will be on the stand and they'll have to uh, just soak that one up of how that could occur. And uh, because if we don't have any pictures of the bullet and how it was recovered and on the scene, uh, that does bring up certain issues. And from Molly, in your experience, have state prison cards ever been able to wear labels on their uniforms expressing their personal beliefs, labels outside of regulation labels? You know, um, the only thing I ever saw that as far as, and I can only talk about my department, the only thing that they would allow on your uniform outside of uh, what was issued by your department were certain limited military insignia or otherwise, uh, some of those things uh, that they would allow. Um, and of course it had fit within uh, certain standards. But that's about the only thing that they would allow. Um, and um, but no, uh, nothing of religious or groups or uh, 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 of that that uh, ever uh, would be. Could it occur? Yes. But would they be repercussions if you did? Absolutely. So it's possible people can do things that is not uh, uh, approved by the uh, chain of command. Okay, and from Kathleen, do you think that defense is just afraid that 
Allen does have items associated with Odin in those items that were taken from the home. Drawings, info, or links to the four men being named recently. I wish you were had sent me this before I created this suppression of evidence of gun digital, because that is a great point. And there is that possibility. <laughs> and that could be one of the things that they want. Uh, 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 not, uh, and we're speculating about that, but that is a good point. And I hadn't thought about that. Good observation. Okay. Um, you, can you take a one off? Sure. Yeah, might as well. Um, from Michelle, did I miss anything on Amber? Uh, uh, we've been billed, we paid the bill, and we're waiting on the report. And I asked him at least twice a day. Yes. Uh, if I don't get something next day or two, I'm on a... Um, he'll call. I'll call. I think I'm nagging enough for everybody that he'll call. And from Perry, will RA Defense point the finger at the clients? It appears they're going to point it at a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> it's just that I never imagined that we would have these additional people out of nowhere. But yes, uh, that's always been one of the possibilities that they would point the finger at them. And then, of course, at Logan and then all these other people that have just out of nowhere that law enforcement knew about. We just didn't know about. And is she? Uh, mm -hmm. Hey, Steve, do you think the staging was done to throw off the investigation? If it is staging, that is a possibility. Absolutely. Um, and um, if staging did occur. Um, absolutely, that is something that law enforcement would consider. And from Marge, do the lawyers have to get this defense from R.A. himself? No. I mean, you know, they, uh, your client, of course, um, it is not burdened to just the restriction of his own thoughts. Attorneys can have their own thoughts and own representation and understanding of the law uh, that is far greater than most uh, defendants. And so, uh, but um, uh, now does Richard Allen bring up some facts that the defense has put in that 136-page uh, document? Absolutely. Uh, they're saying that Allen thought of uh, or uh, recognized the pagan issues um, separately from them which is interesting. And uh, if true, we have to uh, look at that. And how could that be? Because that is something that uh, has to be addressed. Oh, you're waiting on me. Mm -hmm. My bad. <laughs> okay. I have a lot to read tonight. Okay, let's see here. Uh, that was um, and from Mary Ann, in your opinion, were the bodies posed or staged, organized or disorganized? Um, I haven't seen anything. I know very little about the crime scene. Um, if you take from what they said about the movement, staging, dressing, redressing, um, that is uh, something and lack of transfer of evidence and, uh, and certain patterns that all of that goes more towards organized. Uh, but I'm just taking it for face value of some of the things that have been said uh, about the crime scene by both the from the Logan search warrant and now from the uh, defense uh, that it does appear that uh, for someone to be able to control two girls and have the lack of uh, transfer of evidence and uh, commit uh, the double homicide uh, that that does appear to be more organized than a disorganized offender. Okay, and a follow-up for Marianne. Is the theory of the case involving, can I say that, the Sons of Odin, a proper subject for a Frank's motion? Isn't it supposed to be about the veracity of the statements in the search warrant? Well, they're bringing up more that this wasn't addressed and that it should have been brought up and presented to the judge. That's what they're, they're, they're saying that not only did the investigators change and alter and um, misrepresent some evidence, they totally disregarded and didn't bring this to the attention of the court, which would have made the judge question, is Richard Allen the offender? And, and that's what the whole thing is. So, um, 
now that's from my perspective um and uh that's what i took it as and from couch thank you uh, five dollars many thanks to you both i appreciate that thank your support all right and from perry will investigators have asked ra's wife whether she believes it's him in the bridge video i would expect that they would ask um i don't know what that answer would be i would you know uh is this you is this your husband (laughs) yes i would have asked that question um but uh, don't know if it was or not. All right, from Gail. So the document was released, then sealed? I don't know if it's been sealed or not. Um, it's out there, and there was another document, um, uh, another memorandum uh, released uh, yesterday also, a, a three-page one. Okay. I don't know if it's been then sealed or not. Okay, we've already talked about pointing the finger at the client, right? Uh-huh. All right, so let's skip that one. And from Millie, have you ever seen or worked a ritual uh, homicide. homicide crime scene? Uh, no, uh, I don't believe I have. I, I'll have to think about that, but I, um, not that I can recall. No. Can you, can you place one? We'll have to talk about that. Yeah, we we have to work on that one, Millie. Yeah, I mean, I've we've. I've seen so many strange things in my life that um, I've never right. even thought. I just wonder if it's really considered ritualistic. Though. Yeah, I know. I, we'll have to talk about We're that. We're going to work on that one. Good question, though. Thank you. All right. And 63 plots. Uh, True Crime Web is best. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Steve. Thank you, 63 Thank plots. You appreciate so that. Thank you so much. We appreciate I, it. I, absolutely amazing. All right. And Sylvia Brown, do you think this is why the first Jones <laughs> ran from the hills? Now that you mention it. Very quiet. <laughs> we can't throw it out with the, uh, you know, uh, yeah, we have to. Uh, uh, that is a, a a reasonable question to ask right now. That is this something that, uh, but no, I think that uh, whatever they the, the findings and the reasons for that was not for this, um, but who knows? All right. And from Mist at True Crime Web, do you think? Is a theory from RA or attorneys? If if you take it at face value, it's the culmination of both of them. That the attorney says Richard Allen had his own perspective of what was occurring within the prisons. And now they from the outside have agreed and and that they mesh uh, that certain things are occurring. Do I think that's the case? No. Um, I think that is probably the weakest part of this. Um, but um, uh, do I think that should be looked into? Absolutely. Uh, whatever the court does, the court does. Uh, whatever you know, law enforcement has a duty to do certain things. They present it to the uh, uh, judicial system, the prosecutor, and it's taken through the courts. And uh, we'll have to be um, looking at it. Will we all be happy with whatever the findings are? No, because we have two innocent children that lost their lives uh, at the hands of evil. And with that being said, we have to recognize that at the end of the day, we know facts that we will always know, but we won't be able, that if this doesn't go to court, you're going to have this great argument that we have experts that says this bullet belonged to Richard Allen's gun that was recovered from his house. And we as a whole in society we will be arguing that fact. And so we need it to get to court. But if the um, defense is successful in this, that will not happen. Um, And so uh, will the prosecution go um, and continue along the other factors from the witnesses and the possibilities of, and from other things that Richard Allen places him on the bridge at a certain time and the witnesses place him there at a certain time. And, it, will that uh, play a part in it? Because there are some key testimonies out there that places him there and that this bullet, if we just go by the first, it, is the prosecution absolutely uh, evidence supported by these experts and by the reports because the prosecution does have a report from an expert that says 
The bullet at the scene came from Richard Allen's home. We will always know that fact. Um, and um, uh, it may or may not ever be presented to a jury. And what does that fact mean? And of course, there will be opposing parties on that. And there'll be a great debate. Um, and so we'll just have to see how the courts carry out. But uh, absolutely want to thank y'all for uh, being here tonight. You got anything else going on no, there? You're done. You want to leave that for you? Um, no. Um, also, guys, um, don't forget um, that um, I'm going to be going over to Unearth Secrets. If one of the mods could put that link they did. Uh, to her, uh, let's go over there. I think, I don't know if her show has started yet. It should. No, no one. And, uh, but I'm going to go over there and aggravate her for a few minutes. And uh, if y'all would come over and join me. And if you have any questions of her on the uh, uh, Amber Crumb case or whatever she's talking about tonight, uh, she's extremely intelligent, um, absolutely amazing. Um, and so uh, support her in any shape, form, or fashion that you can. And like I said, that's Unearthed Secrets. Appreciate it, guys. Y'all stay safe out there, and we'll see you soon. Thank y'all. Love you. Thank you, Mods.